Good morning, I'm Pastor Jeff, and it's a joy to gather with you for worship this morning. Before we transition into worship, a couple of invitations for you. We have uh, resumed gathering for worship in the sanctuary on Sunday mornings at 8.30. And if you'd like to learn more about how we're doing that service to help it to be a safe sanctuary for everybody to gather, we encourage you to check out the video about that and to call and register. Make your reservation to share in that. We also are gathering for worship in the parking lot Sunday mornings and Wednesday evenings, so you're welcome to share in that as well. Also, if you would like to just be able to spend some time for prayer and reflection meditation in the sanctuary, you're free to do that during our regular office hours. We simply ask you to stop at the desk and, and let us know you're going to be doing that. Also, a couple of other invitations. On Thursday afternoons, Bethlehem is partnering with the USDA on distributing food boxes. If you would like to help distribute those food boxes, please contact the office. And if you'd like to receive one of those, some of those food boxes, please come on those Thursday afternoons. Also, we're getting ready for Christian education. We're in conversation with the local school administrators and partnering with them on having our plans coincide with, uh, with the plans that the school districts are making. And it would be really helpful if you would register your kids, uh, yourself, for those Christian edu education opportunities this fall. And you can do that on our website as well. With that, I invite you to transition with me to worship. We begin worship with a prayer of confession. After each petition, please respond, Lord, help us to know you more. Let us pray. O oh Lord, forgive us when we fail to respond to your call with faith. Forgive us when we are frightened and pull back from following your call. Forgive us when we fail to sense and trust your presence in our lives. Lord, help us to know you more. We confess the many ways we have forgotten how to live as your disciples. We have not finished what we began. We have feasted with friends but ignored strangers. We have been captive by our possessions. Lift our burdens, refresh our hearts, and forgive our sins. Lord, help us to know you more. We stand together as your disciples. We seek renewed and renewing faith. Open our hearts to hear and receive your word. Touch us now with your spirit, Lord. Lord, help us to know you more. Hear these words. There is rejoicing when a sinner repents. Put your trust in these promises. God will never leave you or forsake you. For the sake of Christ Jesus, you are forgiven. Rejoice in the good news. Amen. Let's join together singing, You Are My Vision.
embracing God. Help us to open our hearts to you. When we open our hearts, our lives are changed and we are transformed by your love. May we listen to your spirit that nudges us to follow you and to share your love with the world. In your name we pray. Amen. My name's Carson. And my name is Cadence, and this is my little sister. What's her name? Bye. And we're going to be leading you in Children's Good News Time. We are going to play this game called Marco Polo. Marco! Polo! Marco! Polo! Marco! Polo! Marco! Polo! Marco! Polo! Marco! And Polo! Find Cammy? Oh. Marco. Marco. Today, Pastor Raya will share a story about Lydia. Lydia needed to listen close to hear God's words, like we did while playing Marco Polo. We can't necessarily see God, but if we open our minds and hearts, we can hear the good news he has to share it with us. Now please hold your hands and pray with us. Dear God, thank you for sharing your word with us. Thank you for placing the people in our lives to share the story of your unconditional love with us. Help us. Listen with open minds and hearts today as we hear Lydia's story. May it be a blessing to us for this week ahead. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning, friends. It's Pastor Raya. Uh, joyous Sunday morning with you today. Uh, I've got another great story out of the book of Acts that I want to walk through with you this morning. It begins in Acts 16. It's verses uh, 6 through 15. I think you're probably pretty familiar with this story. Um, so let me read a little bit of that to you first, and then we'll walk through it. They went through the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the word in Asia. When they'd come opposite Mysia, they attempted to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them. So passing by Mysia, they went down to Tros. And during the night, Paul had a vision. There stood a man of Macedonia pleading with him and saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. We'd seen the vision we immediately tried to cross over to Macedonia, being convinced that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. We set sail for Tros and took a straight course to Samothras, and the following day to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which is a leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in this city for some days. On the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate by the river where we supposed there was a place of prayer and we sat down and spoke to the women who had gathered there a certain woman named Lydia a worshiper of God was listening to us she was from the city of Thyatira and a dealer in purple cloth the Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul and when she and her household were baptized she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she pre prevailed upon us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Ah, another great story of the early church 
and the obstacles that they faced and how surprising and unexpected things happened. When I think about Paul setting out on his mission, he thought he knew where he was going. He had a plan and he wanted to set sail there and, and do his work in a certain way. But then everything changed. And the Holy Spirit kind of came upon him and stopped him. Uh, the word actually was forbidden by the Holy Spirit. Have you ever had a plan of how things are supposed to work out? Only to find out that the plan is back in the garbage. Things are going in a different route. Makes things really uncertain. Makes us anxious because we feel like we're not in control. I'm sure that Paul and his crew of apostles and missionaries might have felt that same way. Nevertheless, they seemed to be open to listening to what the Spirit was doing. Remember, they were going by what they had been taught by Jesus. Jesus had gone back to the Father, and now they were strictly led by the Holy Spirit. That whole book of Acts is really targeted about the work of the Holy Spirit. Well, Paul sets sail and changes his course, um, and he ends up in a different land, Macedonia, uh, a Roman colony. These were Gentiles, again, non-Jewish people that he was going to minister to. You know, another thing I think about with our changing of plan is, can you remember all the way back, maybe to New Year's Eve of 2019? Did you have some plans and some dreams of what might happen in 2020? I'm just going to imagine that everyone's laughing right now at home. I'm laughing. Can you tell? Because things just have not turned out the way we planned them to be. But the good news is that sometimes when things aren't perfect, it doesn't mean that they can't be wonderful. Right? In surprising and unexpected ways. God challenges us to see how God is creating good at all times, even in the midst of darkness, of anxiety, of challenges and changes to the plan. Well, Paul and his crew, like you said, they end up in um, Macedonia and uh, they go outside the gate of the city. So everything happens inside the gate and they go outside the gate because it's the Sabbath. They go outside because they think there's a gathering there. And I wanted to sit outside again because the water is right behind me. They went outside down by the river, and there they were greeted by a group of women who had gathered for prayer. I think about how in this new time of church, how we are gathering. We are gathering in different ways. Um, sometimes we're in our cars. Sometimes we're online together in Zoom meetings. Um, just had the great opportunity this last week to gather with a group of women on Zoom to do some Bible study and connect with one another. You'll hear a little bit more about it later, but um, it's a great way just to connect and see each other's face again, hear each other's voice, gathering together. It doesn't always have to be in the same way. Um, we gather together and the Spirit guides us of how that will go. Well. The two things I want you to take from this story today are one, when you're not sure which way to go, because there's so many uncertain things right now. One day we get instruction this way, the next day it changes, and we're not sure who to listen to, and we're not sure what our next step is. If you remember last week when Pastor Jeff preached about the seed of the word planted in us, what do we listen to? Who do we listen to? And I encourage you to continue to let that Word of God be your driving guide, be what you listen to. The two things that Jesus says to us over and over again, love God, love your neighbor. You do those things. You can't go wrong. And always remember that God is working towards good. Paul finds this group of ladies down by the river, and there's this woman there named Lydia. What a wonderful story to have this woman uplifted. She is named, she is a business owner, she 
she more than likely is an elevated person within this community, a dealer of purple cloth, one of the few women ever named that way. And she and her household welcome them in, the apostles in, and they listen. The scripture says, a certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. And the Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. So again, two things. Who do we listen to? What do we do when we don't know which way to go? What's guiding us? And to remember to listen. Listen. A phrase I like a lot is, listen more and talk less. Sometimes we think we have it all figured out, but until we listen more to each other, we can't know the whole story. Because Lydia opened her ears to listen to Paul preaching the gospel, God opened her heart. God changed her and there was this conversion. It said that Lydia was the first European conversion to Christianity. Her whole household changed their life because of this chance encounter where Paul went to an unexpected place, went to a place where there was a small gathering of people worshiping, preached the word, and changed their whole household. They were all baptized. And then this wonderful gift afterwards of Lydia offering hospitality and welcoming them all into her home. Again, if you haven't already, I just encourage you so much to spend some time in the book of Acts this summer. There are such great stories. Great stories of how the new church um, became, how it was built. And I just feel there are so many parallels between the early church and some of the things that we're feeling today of how we are church together. So I hope that you might find a way to gather and to listen to the word and to take a moment to intentionally think about who's leading you, who is guiding you. God never says it's going to be easy, but God always promises to be with us, walking with us, guiding us, carrying us a lot of times, maybe even kicking and screaming. But in the end, God is good and God loves us. So listen to the Holy Spirit this week. Find ways to connect with one another. And God bless you. Amen.
me turn and follow you and never be the same. In your company I'll go where your love and footsteps show. Thus I'll move and live and grow in you. Well, hello, friends. It's Pastor Raya, and this is our Rise Up moment for this week. Uh, each week, we try to highlight a ministry that's happening or a way that you are able to connect with others here at Bethlehem. And so this week, we are highlighting our online women's Bible study. And I have some friends here with me who are going to share with uh, their experience, and they were participated this week. So, uh, Linda, what? Uh, Want to say hello? Hi. <laughs> My name is Linda Roth, and I have attended Women's Bible Studies and The Circle for many years at Bethlehem. I've always enjoyed the fellowship and the learning that is involved in those. This, I've missed those during the pandemic, but this week we were able to get together using our iPads or computers through Zoom to have a little Bible study. We, I enjoyed that so much and just to see the people again. Next month, I would like to, you to be able to join us. We will be having that on Monday, August 10th at 2 p.m. All women are welcome and encouraged to come. Whether you're a first timer or a long time Bible study person, all are welcome. Come join us. You'll enjoy it. Awesome. Hi, Wilma. Hi. My name is Wilma Luz, and I've been a member of WELCA for a long time, uh, as long as I can remember. WELCA stands for Women of the Evangelical Lutheran Church of America. There's something about getting together with a bunch of women that always feels good. It's been a really important part of my life. Uh, Welka has lots of activities going on, but today I just wanted to mention that our monthly meeting gathering will be through Zoom, and that will follow a, buddy, a Bible study printed in the Gather magazine. It's not a study you need to prepare for or be some kind of a Bible scholar to appreciate. There's always something new and interesting to learn. Everyone has something to share, and Along with that, you get to meet lots of new people within our faith community and see old friends. Just like Linda, I hope you can join us for our next gathering in August. Great. Hi, Kathy. Hi. Hello, friends. I am Kathy Durst, and I want you to know that you are all so welcome to join us wherever you are for this informal gathering of women who love to spend time in the Bible. I was able to join the group this week, even though I am currently in Montana. What a joy it was to see faces and hear voices of friends I have not seen or heard from in four months. You're all so truly welcome to join us. Invite a friend or a neighbor or any of my Tuesday ladies out there. You're more than welcome. We'd love to see your faces at our next meeting. Just a little tidbit out there. We are planning for some great things this fall with Tuesday ladies. We've got some great studies and you're all welcome to that too. More on that to come. If you are new to Zoom, don't hesitate to call the church if you have any questions. Ask one of us, or better yet, talk to Raya. She knows more than we do. It's really very simple, and it's just a great opportunity to meet up with people that you don't get to see that often these days. Thanks. Great. Well, thanks for sharing. Thanks for sharing, ladies. Uh, again, trying something new, trying to connect with people. Uh, this is the women's Bible study. You know, the men meet on Tuesdays at noon, so there is that too. But the women are going to be meeting next August 10th at 2 p.m. Please call the church to register so that you're included in the call information. I'll email it out to you. And although we follow the kind of study in the Gather magazine, you do not need to have a copy of it to join along. So please just um, let us know if you want to join us, and we look forward to maybe seeing you. Have a great week. I'd invite you into a time of prayer and sung response. The Spirit intercedes for us, the signs to leave, the words to express, amen. 
Let's pray. Faithful God, we ask you to strengthen our mind, body, and spirit today. When we're weary, may we be refreshed. When we're worn, may we, may we be renewed. When we're broken, may we be restored. When we're fearful, may we become faithful. Help us to walk in complete confidence today, knowing that you are always with us. We pray together. The Spirit intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words to express. Amen. Comforting God, pour your Spirit upon us so that we can follow our call to proclaim the good news of your love and grace. Healing God, we pray for all who need love, for those who are unemployed or underemployed, for those in difficult relationships, for those with chronic pain, for those waiting for news about their health, and for those who are sick. Calm our troubled and hurting hearts with your peace. We pray together. Loving God, help us to change our negative words and transform them into words that bring life no matter what challenges are placed before us. Words of faith, strength, courage, success, confidence, trust, peace, happiness, and joy are just some of the positive attributes we want to reign in on our lives. Guide us to recognize the power of our own words that they might give glory to you. We pray together. The Spirit intercedes for us, the sighs to deep, the words to express, amen. We ask all these things, and whatever else you may see that we need, in your Son's holy name, amen. Sometimes when we don't even know what to pray, Jesus reminds us of this prayer as a way to center ourselves. Would you please pray with me? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. So good to pray with you. Thank you so much for sharing BLC at home this morning. It was really good to be able to worship with you and to spend some time together hearing God's word. Just a few announcements and reminders. One is to let you know that there's lots of different opportunities to connect with worship. Obviously what we're doing right now here, but also we're offering drive-in worship uh, which is fun outside, you stay in your vehicle. That's on Sundays at 10 and Wednesdays at 6.30. We're also offering some of our very first in-sanctuary services. Uh, that is Sunday at 8.30, and we do request that you make a reservation with the church office, 225-9740, by Fridays at 11 a.m. That way we can keep everybody safe. Also wanted to say thank you. Thank you for your prayer support. Thank you for your financial support that continues to make Bethlehem just the vibrant church that it is. Your gifts are literally feeding people, literally, with food and with the good news of Jesus Christ. So thank you so much for that. Speaking of food, we will be celebrating communion at the end of this service, so just hang around if you'd like to do that and prepare your elements at home for, uh, for God's meal. Uh, but it's also fine and faithful if you'd like to continue to wait until we're able to celebrate that together in the sanctuary in worship. And again, thank you so much for being a part of this. And now I want you to sing with me. We're going to sing This Little Light of Mine. This 
This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Even when I'm afraid, I'm gonna let it shine. Even when I'm afraid, I'm gonna let it shine. Even when I'm afraid, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. This is a light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This is a light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This is a light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, 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 let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. At this time, go ahead and grab your bread and your crackers or your wine and your grape juice to share in Holy Communion. Celebrating communion traditionally includes the words of institution. When we hear again the words that Jesus spoke to his disciples at the Last Supper, these are the words of promise and forgiveness as a reminder that Jesus is with us. In this time of pandemic, you are welcome to share those words in your home as part of your communion together at home. The words will be on the screen, so someone at your table, please speak them aloud. Normally, we then pray together the Lord's Prayer. Since we already prayed it together, share the words of, of distribution as you eat and drink this gift of grace. Body of Christ given for you, blood of Christ shed for you. Friends, this gift is indeed for you. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift. In faith towards you, and in love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now, friends, receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and with mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, go in peace. Be the church. Thanks be to God. See you soon.